Tax Rep Network is brought to you by Bench, America's largest bookkeeping service for small businesses. Bench is committed to supporting business owners that have fallen seriously behind on their books, something that is all too common in representation work. They combine powerful technology and an in-house expert bookkeeping team to deliver accurate financials for every year of missing returns. Bench specializes in tough cases, solving even the most complex, difficult, and time-consuming client challenges. Working with Bench means more time for you to focus on actively working rep cases, problem solving, and growing your practice. What's more, they're fast, meaning you'll be keeping clients and revenue officers happy. It's a win-win. One of the greatest things I found is that if it's a really big, messy case, they can throw more and more people at it versus anyone I could find locally. Once Bench helps your clients fully catch up, their monthly bookkeeping service keeps them out of trouble, ensuring you can provide a truly lasting resolution. Bench's partner program is perfect for tax pros that need a dependable resource they can trust to get their clients caught up. With meaningful partner benefits and dedicated support, Bench already works with many tax rep members. Find out more at www.bench.co slash tax rep. That's www.bench.co slash tax rep. So how do I call the IRS and get through much faster? How do I avoid those courtesy hangups that the IRS does? I use call ENQ. ENQ is a service that you can use to get through to the IRS much faster, get to a representative, and basically get your case resolved. We set up a special arrangement for tax rep network listeners where you can try the service, get 200 minutes for $19.95. For less than 20 bucks, you get 200 minutes and you will save hours and hours and hours of time and frustration. Just go to callenq.com slash TRN. Again, call C-A-L-L-E-N-Q dot C-O-M slash T-R-N as in Tax Rep Network. Try the service. It will literally change your practice. How do I manage my tax rep practice? How do I get transcripts? How do I track every, what is going on with the IRS with every single one of my client cases? How do we complete the offer forms, the powers of attorney, everything? We use Tax Help Software. Tax Help Software is the cornerstone of our practice. We use it for its intelligent ordering. Every single night, it will update the transcripts on our clients. So we will see things happen long before those letters even go to the mail. We can then you know, react. We can let the client know. We can get all the transcripts we need to determine what our client's best options are, when is the uh, debt going to expire, and we can fill in all of the IRS forms and get them filed accurately, the analysis done correctly. If you're interested in giving it a test, go to taxhelpsoftware.com, use promo code TAXREPTRIAL, all one word, all caps, you'll get a two, free two-week trial. Again, that's taxhelpsoftware.com, tax rep trial, all caps for a free two-week trial. If you love it and want to buy it, use tax rep 10, capital, all caps, T-A-X-R-E-P-1-0, tax rep 10, all caps, one word. You'll save 10% on your purchase. It will, it will be the engine that runs your tax rep practice, just like it's what we use for ours. Hey guys, uh, it's Eric. I wanted to um, record this podcast. It's just myself, and it, it'll be fairly short. But it, it's it's sort of critical. Uh, if you've been following me at all online, um, I've been doing a dog and pony show with Darren Gio. Darren is the SBSC Small Business Self Employed Division Commissioner for IRS, and we've been talking and doing enforcement updates. And one of the biggest things I think to come out of this is his discussion that payroll taxes are going to be a serious priority. They've been a priority for a while, so that that's nothing new. But what Darren told us uh, it, during these talks at accountingweb.com's uh, live summit at the ABA tax meeting in, in Washington and we'll, I'm going to be doing the interview, scripted interview with him at the NYU Tax Controversy Forum at the end of June. And what Darren's been kind of hammering on, they have 
um, trained the revenue officers who are the collection officers for the IRS. When they come out, when payroll taxes go unpaid, they do generally an investigation and will assess those people responsible for the unpaid payroll taxes that were withheld from the employees. They're referred to as trust funds. It's referred to as a trust fund investigation. And the assessment against those responsible, often owners, key employees, can be accountants and bookkeepers, um, there's a, a penalty applied to those folks that is equal to 100% of those withheld trust taxes that were not paid over. It's under code section 6672. It's called the trust fund recovery penalty. And for, the, for people to be deemed responsible, it's generally folks who were in a position and had authority to see that the taxes were paid and who failed to do so. So one of my you know, big talking points has always been, if you're the accountant, uh, or the bookkeeper, you do not want to have signature authority. I understand it's a convenience for the owner. I don't care. The owner has to sign everything. Because if you're the bookkeeper and you, you're preparing checks and you're signing them and sending them out, and the owner decides he's not going to pay the trust taxes, and, and you go along with that, you can be deemed responsible, even though it's not your business, even though you didn't benefit from it. It's very dangerous. So you don't want to have signature authority. Well, what, what Darren has been talking about, what the, what the revenue officers are going to do when they come out to do the investigation, they are now being trained to get the bank statements and to trace where the money went. And here's where we're going. Here's where the IRS is going to go with this. If the money got spent up in the business trying to keep it afloat, fine. They'll do the trust fund assessment the way they always have and move on. But if they can show that that money got either, you know, distributed to the owner or spent to benefit the owner personally, they're then to pull the 1040 returns for the owner and see if the owner picked that up as income. I can guarantee you 99% of the time the owner did not pick it up as income because the assumption is always that they'll pay it back at some point. But if they didn't pick it up as income, the revenue officer is either going to refer it to criminal investigation for prosecution, or they're going to send it over to civil exam. And what civil exam will do is they will do an income tax assessment against the owner and then charge them with a 75% civil fraud penalty. So there is now a major offensive that's going to go on over around unpaid payroll taxes. So what do I think this means? What, what is the practical fallout from this? Number one, when you have clients come to you and they have unpaid payroll taxes, I think you need to get your arms around what happened to the money, all right? Look at what the owner drew, look at where the money got spent, all right? So A, you want to get a bigger retainer, obviously, because you're going to have to spend a lot more time. If the money benefited the owner or went out to the owner, uh, or key employees, what I would recommend is either A, that money get repaid pretty quickly if they can. If not, what you may want to seriously consider doing is having them amend their 1040s voluntarily to pick that up. If the IRS does show up, now if the IRS is already involved, um, it's probably too late. But if the revenue officer has not made contact with them, um, I think that there's, there's going to be a good argument to quickly amend the returns and get them in. If and when the IRS does show up, you can say, look, met with the clients. They had always intended to repay this when we realized they couldn't, but they'd gotten the benefit. We picked it up as income. You know, it, The idea is to blunt. A, first of all, we want to blunt any criminal referral. And if we can avoid a 75% civil fraud penalty, even better. Okay. So- the lesson I think today, payroll taxes are going to be are, are hot and they're only getting hotter. If you're going to be marketing for this, absolutely, what you want to do is um, start focusing on this. Uh, when you get clients, or if you have clients that come to you and they have unpaid payroll taxes, this is an issue you're going to need to deal with. Now, if they've already been assessed, let's say you have a client that got assessed and now they're coming to you to modify their agreement. 
if they've already been assessed and that's all happened, you don't have to worry about this. This is for new cases where a revenue officer is going to come out and do their investigation. All right. But if you have that person, you've got to be aware of this and you need to go ahead and, and see where that money went and deal with it appropriately. Last thing, the other thing that you need to be aware of, Darren has told us that now because the government has so much information from FATCA, you know, the, you know, the foreign asset, um, you know, all the foreign asset reporting that's done foreign bank accounts, as well as just foreign assets on the FATCA forms that people have been filing and all the information they've gotten from overseas, from uh, the treaties that they've signed and the agreements they have, that combined with all the John Doe summonses on virtual currency, right? They have, they've done John Doe summonses on Coinbase, Kraken, and Circle. So the government has an enormous amount of data on who owns virtual currency. That information is now going to be made available to collection. So when your client submits a 433 document to be uncollectible for an installment agreement, or if they submit for an offer, the government is going to have that information. You need to make sure that the client, if they own that, discloses it. All right. We have updated our checklist of documents so that it's a yes, no question. Do you own virtual currency? Do you have foreign assets? Yes, no. The client cannot skip by it and ignore it. And the reason is we don't want to take their routine collection case and make it criminal because those cases will be referred over to criminal because you've effectively, you've done a whole bunch of things. Arguably, you've perjured yourself and you signed the 433 under penalty of perjury without disclosing it. Um, the client also could be charged 7201 tax evasion, evasion of payment for submitting a false 433. And if you don't aren't familiar with it, you may want to look at a case called Brimbury. I think it's Brimbury versus U.S. or U.S. versus Brimbury. It's about Janice Brimbury. Her husband was prosecuted being involved in a big um, security scam. Uh, she actually uh, submitted a false 433 while she was selling off very expensive jewelry, did not disclose the jewelry. The government found out about it, set up a sting operation, and she was charged with evasion for failing to um, you know, put that information on her 433. So to wrap up, payroll tax is hot and getting hotter. You need to look at what happened to the money, all right? If it benefited the owner, all right, either went to them or paid for things that benefited them directly. Did they pick it up as income? I can almost assure you most of them didn't. They either have to pick it up as income or they could be looking at, at either a criminal prosecution for not reporting it or at least in a, an assessment with a civil fraud penalty. And finally, when you're doing collection cases now, be aware that the government has the data on foreign assets and virtual currency. Press your client and have something in your file. Yes, they have it or no, they don't. If they say no and you've documented it later, if it turns out they did and special agents show up in your office, you want to be able to have your defense. We spoke to the client about it, gave them the checklist. They checked no. I, I don't know what to tell you, special agent. You may want to go talk to them. They're going to have to get their own criminal <laughs> representation. You don't want to spend a fortune having to defend yourself either. Okay. So with that, everyone, I hope everyone is enjoying um, spring. We're heading into summer. Um, we have a whole new series coming up. We're doing liens and levies workshop on June 14th. Um, Criminal Tax Day is June 10th. Uh, tons of activity going on. I will be at the NATP's Tax Posium at the end of July at Caesars Palace. If you're going to be there, make sure you come in. We're gonna, I'm going to be teaching offers and compromise and how to handle an IRS audit. Uh, and with that, everyone, listen, have a great week. All right. See you inside tax rep. Bye-bye.